I'm on LTE. Hi guys, we are live at Pet Wants on the Avenue with Rebecca Eaves from the Hello. Arrow Fund, Lindsay Howard from Pet Wants, Hello. obviously, mm -hmm. and Tyson, who is, who is looking and lovingly up at his Aunt Rebecca. I love him. I love him too. And behind you, this beautiful store, Pet Wants on the Avenue, is located just next door to the North End Cafe, which is fantastic. What a great location. And goodness gracious, the first viewer is Mary Kay Corfidge. Mary Kay, mm -hmm. hey! Isn't we love that you. awesome? We love her too. She was on my inaugural show on I Monday. Saw. And okay. she did a fabulous job, and we're so grateful that she's here. So, Lindsay, I want you to start out, if you wouldn't mind. Um, the Aero Fund rocks, Mary Kay says. Tell us yes, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Tell us a little bit about um, this beautiful store, Pet Wants on the Avenue. And people, people always say, Pet Wants. Well, it's like human wants mm -hmm. and pet wants. Exactly. What the pet needs, what the humans need. Yes, so we have what your pet wants. But uh, basically the main thing we do here is our own brand of food. So we have dog and cat food that's made fresh every month. Um, it's all natural, no byproducts or fillers. We don't use corn, wheat, soy, any of the bad stuff that's put in food. Um, but the freshness makes a huge difference for animals. And it's slow cooked small batch food so you know it's not getting cooked at those high temps losing all the nutrients um, we there offer you. free delivery with it too if you can't make it to our store yeah I hear you were up in the knobs today I was that was interesting <laughs> how was that <laughs> the, main, the main roads were okay the neighborhoods not so much <laughs> yeah I can only imagine so you really go all around it's not just like Crescent Hill you're traveling right, right. yeah we do all of Jefferson County Oldham County and Southern Indiana so. oh my gosh ooh, that's ooh, fantastic ooh, I, did, I just heard that does Tyson, does Tyson go with you he does he's my little co-pilot he's your little traveling <laughs> look at him he's just just staring at Rebecca. I he love loves, him. I know. <laughs> He's really cool in his little khaki too. Does he have, do we have those um, little sweaters available here? No, actually I don't have these. I've, my brother bought this for him years ago. Oh, it's but, so uh, cute. We have Pet Wants hoodies. He usually has one of those too that he wears. The Pet Wants hoodies are adorable. They are. They're American apparel actually. They're super soft. Oh, you're soft. kidding me. That <laughs> no. is so cute. I love that. Well, you can buy all kinds of fun stuff oh, here. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking around and I'm seeing neckerchiefs and bow ties and little leashes and and toys and tons of stuff. Yeah, we've got great get. shoes. Um, actually, the uh, bandanas that we sell, part of the proceeds go to benefit the Arrow Fund. And they so, are oh, awesome. Fantastic. And thank you for selling them yeah. and thank who makes them. And uh, uh, those bandanas are fantastic because they fit on the collar. Right. And so right. they hang exactly right. You don't have to tie them and bunch them up. Mm -hmm. And Frodo is uh, just looks marvelous in his. He has an array of, of course uh, he does. bandanas from. Of Gary has his own wardrobe does. of bandanas. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I love that. So we have uh, a wonderful um, hosting place today and we're very grateful for that because the snow has kicked power off on a lot of places on Frankfurt Avenue and, uh, and Lindsay was one of the lucky ones so we're grateful for that. And um, I also would like to talk to our dear Rebecca Eves about the Aero Fund. Mm. I'm very interested in knowing about Ralphie's Promise because I've been reading a lot about it on Facebook. It is something that is so dear to us all. Um, John Ridgel, who owns Louisville Tree uh, Service, he had Ralphie, um, he adopted him a little over three years ago, I think. Ralphie came to us and he had to lose both of his eyes. Oh, no. So he was a, an elderly little beagle that lost both of his eyes. It never slowed him down. He had attitude. He went to work with Daddy. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, Ralphie was just a character, and we loved him all. We loved him so, and so we were so saddened. And John took it especially hard losing losing little Ralphie, and he wanted to give back. Um, he believes in what the Earlfin does, so he is um, donating trees and also donating getting trees, the planting of the trees in either your yard or Creasy Mahan. Oh, that's oh. nice. And they, as you know, la uh, was it last year <clears throat> or year before last, they were devastated by a tornado, that's lost right. over 300 trees in, in their tree canopy. So crazy. the donation that you make or the, the, the price you pay for the trees comes directly to the Aero Fund. So you have a, and you have the option of buying a plaque you can plant it in your yard or at Creasy Mayhan. And so it helps you heal your heart to have a tree planted in your pet's memory. It also um, helps the Aero Fund, which helps the severe tortured, abused, and neglected animals. 
and uh, it's a local business that does a lot of things plus you're helping um, create a more beautiful planet you know in which we need to all start caring about yes we should and it's 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 and then Creasy Mayhan is a one of the what best kept secrets ever yeah it's one of the most beautiful places to go and you can take your dogs and you can take your kids and you can walk on these wildlife trails it's it's amazing. Well, I tell you what, it's fabulous. And I love the fact that you're going to be doing this out at Crazy Mayhan because it's going to be um, an opportunity to not only grow back the trees that were lost, but to get kids out there so they can see exactly what's going on and learn a little bit more about nature, which, you know, many oh. kids in the city don't have a chance to do. Yes. And they do a lot of children's um, education programs, everything. It's, a, it's an amazing place. You and I have been out there many times. We love it. And, and we, love, we love our... Tavia, who she's runs awesome, it. isn't yes, she? Yes, she's absolutely perfect. So it's really fun to be doing our live remotes now because we can go anywhere we want, and we can uh, do take it from Tara's Wagon Wednesday from any location. And uh, Lindsay Howard, I'm just going to keep popping this in. <laughs> Lindsay Howard has been kind enough to allow us to come to Pet Wants on the Avenue today, and Tyson is our co-host, which is so <laughs> nice. They've provided us with water and all the other creature comforts that we need. And uh, we are going to be also talking with Carla Wallace, the activist extraordinaire, a little bit later on in the program. She's got a lot to say because she fights all kinds of things, injustice and racism, and she's going to talk about the March for Our Lives this weekend. So many things that really affect our lives on a daily basis and some things that we need to be involved in and get maybe a little bit more aware of. So she's coming up, and uh, you all are welcome to stay with us for the full two hours. We would love to have you. So, Rebecca, yes. we've talked about <laughs> You've been on Take It From Tara since 2012. Do you know that? Wherever you go, I will follow. <laughs> 2012. We've been friends a long time. Been... Love, I love what you do for the community. Yeah, well, I love wonderful. what you do for the community. Thank you. We do. I, I do, too. I mean, it's not just me, but I do, too. Well, I tell you what, it's important to realize that um, the Aero Fund is working again, and I'm going to talk about this several times, is um, working against the stream because people treat animals horribly and Kentucky is the worst state and we found out this year 54 yeah because yeah. we're counting Shaw. territories <laughs> in the District of Columbia now yeah um, I mean, and Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico yeah isn't that sad it's sick we are wor worst worst in animal mm -hmm. protection laws and so uh, Mary Kay says can you talk about the current proposed animal legislation yes we can Mary Kay She's such a great co-host. She is. She just jumps she in. Wrong. I just love her. Um, so talk to us a little bit about what's what's happening uh, in Frankfurt, if if you want to. Well, I'd, I'd, there's a, a hot things. car bill that they're trying to get through, and then there's also a um, sexual animal animal sexual assault, which is really, really one that I cannot believe we haven't had passed. Um, it's, Are you aware of the fact that this is one of four states in the country? I think it's that five. One of five. five. I think it's five. Uh, one of five states that does not, and it is here. Do not think that it's not here. Just like before, I said people were saying anim dog fighting is not here. It is here. Sec animal sexual assault is here, yep. and it's of uh, dogs and horses are the worst. Uh, are the most offended, but they it, it, the list goes on and on, yeah, sure. and they can pick what animal they want. It's a it's a it's a real thing. It's very sad, and I am appalled that our state does not do anything, and I'm appalled that it's just sitting there. It was promised that it would be, you know, uh, heard, and it's just that that bill's just sitting there. And what a shame! I'm a I'm isn't a, it in the tourism committee? I, Something crazy, Catherine. It's, it's in a not, told yeah, us. yeah. I'm, I don't. I'm not aware of what committee it is in right now. I know that it switched. So the I wouldn't want to. I don't want to give false information. I just know that. Please remember, if anybody and they're doing it here is sexually assaulting an animal, they're also in the homes with your children. Yep. So get on the phone, call the legislative line, and um, you know it by yeah, heart. Well, yeah. Well, and there's no reason to not pass it. Yeah. There is. What, what, Rebecca, what likes, Rebecca likes to ask legislators a question. Go ahead, Rebecca. I just want to know anybody that's out there that is in legislation that is just letting us, our beautiful state, go without a law like this to protect our animals and our children. If you will not 
vote for a, a law against se animal sexual assault or bestiality, is there something that we need to know about your past or about what you're into? I'm mm -hmm. that serious. I mean it. I mean, it's a no-brainer. It is just awful that, that we do not have any protection for these animals. Well, I appreciate the fact that Nancy Greenwell is listening. Isaiah Calloway is with us. They're saying definitely. Daryl Adams is watching. Um, Tommy, Tom Ham is on here. Hey, Tommy. <laughs> Sharon Brown, we appreciate you. Of course, Courtney Gray, our great animal lover. Cindy Tandy Courtney. is here. Hey, Cindy. We're so glad to have you guys with us. We are at Pet Wants on the Avenue, right down here on Frankfurt Avenue, located next to the North End Cafe. And Lindsay Howard, who is, um, let's see, camera right, is holding Tyson. The beautiful and talented Tyson. Sweet Tyson. <laughs> who's still in love with his Aunt Rebecca. He just well, he, he's, faced, he's faced towards me. I do love you. <laughs> love you so much. But he loves his mommy. He oh, just yeah. adores his mommy. I've seen him many, many times. And uh, Rebecca Eves is our other guest. Hi, Darlene. Good to see you, too, uh, with the Aero Fund. And we've been talking about... Um, so a couple of things with the Aero Fund, which are really amazing. Number one, Ralphie's Promise, where you'll be able to plant trees in memory of animals at either Crazy Mayhem or in your own yard. Did you tell us what the cost was? We want, I did not, and, I, and it's on our website. It's on, uh, we just made a post on it yesterday. Do you uh, need that? Yeah. Well, Go ahead. Yeah. You can look at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. I mean, yeah. But I mean, well, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. do it in a minute. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, um, we'll, we'll get you that information. Um, well, we can post it on my website. It's on too. Creasy Mayhan, it's on Louisville Tree, it's on the Aero Fund. And it's everywhere. Everybody, yeah. please be patient with us because we are now um, converting to a new website. So please be patient. Links are getting set up and everything. Very so, nice. So yeah, we're very challenge. excited. <laughs> yeah, but I love that. Uh, hey, Courtney says, hey there, ladies. Amy Picklesheimer, welcome. We're glad that you're with us today, too. Um, so Rebecca and Lindsay, you guys work together on quite a few different projects, and I'd love to know what's coming up that will involve both Pet Wants on the Avenue and well, the Aerofund. I just want to say that Pet, I mean, I'm going to let Lindsay talk of about Of course, this Rebecca event. would answer because... <laughs> well, I want to say this because <laughs> before she talks about the event, Pet Wants has been one of uh, just an avid supporter of the Aero Fund and I just want Lindsay to know how much we appreciate it. Absolutely. For so long. So you yeah, all thank do you. great work. Thank and you. It's a no brainer to support you all. Thank you. We're just glad. like a no brainer to, to do, you know, the, the passage of that bill too. Yes, right. Exactly. I love it. Um, so tell me about some of the upcoming things and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that there's something happening at Easter. Yes. So we are going to have uh, pet pictures with the Easter bunny coming up on the 31st, which is the same day as the Easter parade. So from noon to three-ish, uh, you can bring your pet by and get their picture taken with the Easter Bunny. There's no fee for it, but a recommended donation to the Aero Fund is Yippee! always welcome. Very They'll nice. They'll be here with some of their swag and to talk to people as well. Um, but we've got uh, a lovely lady coming in to take pictures and she's gonna have Easter backdrops and then uh, the Easter Bunny will be here too. Wonderful, so. and I'll be doing Facebook Live in the parade and I will come, at, come down here and do a little Facebook Live too. Katie Sparks says, hi Tyson. Say hello. Yeah. Tracy Sprouls <laughs> is with us. She is the mother of Strider and the other little uh, group of Tiny Heroes Therapy Horses. Mm -hmm. Oh, little minis. Yes. Aren't they adorable? Oh my God, she's gonna be marching in the Easter parade. I have two minis now. Are you, you I have, have two an minis? I have a, <gasps> an abused mini and a neglected mini. Oh, oh Lord. Lucia and Rockstar. Yes. <laughs> Of course you do. Of course I do. Lucia yeah. and Rockstar. Rockstar has blonde hair that's everywhere. You're going to have to get used to the idea that uh, Tracy Sprouls is going to be in our lives because she and I have become buddies. Good. She brought Strider down to Bridgehaven Mental Health Services. Wonderful. And the members just went crazy. Yeah. So that's part of animals in our lives, and I love that. And, you know, Tyson obviously brings a lot of uh, love to his mom and to his friends. <laughs> and I'm interested in knowing, Rebecca, uh, yes. you know, uh, the Arrow Fund dogs that actually um, come to you, we always describe, and, and rescue dogs too, we always describe as extremely grateful. Yes, they are. I think that you see that too, and it's not just anthropomorphizing an animal. There's a genuine gratitude mm -hmm. that shows, even oh, in the animals that are the most neglected. I mean, a lot of them, sometimes I, it's like they don't their eyes aren't even alive yet they've given up i yeah. mean they're they're on their way out and yeah. several are i mean really minutes or that night if we don't get them we've got one on the way right now yeah i heard you on the um, transport call yeah and uh it, it's amazing but you usually even then get a lick 
or something. They kind of know, even though uh, the uh, vet techs and everything are prodding and you know sticking them. They know that they're in a place of comfort. They know that they're being helped. I mm -hmm. mean, it's just they are on this level that they just get it, and uh, it 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 just makes such a wonderful animal. Well, and usually it's your hands that are giving them that love and that affection, which is amazing. Well, we'll be there meeting this new one. Too. I bet. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us anything about this it's new a, one? It's 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 quite tragic. It's a um, three and a half month old. Show uh, us. Le yeah. Talk to Lindsay for a second, because you know she can't I can't multitask. I she cannot she multitask. Can't talk. No, and I know that you have watched a lot of the Aero Fund rescues come in, Lindsay, yeah, and yeah. be such a part of, of all of our consciousness, especially on Facebook when they oh, post. Yeah. They do a great job of getting all the information out there and sharing every animal that they bring in and that they help and giving updates about what's going on with them so that you can follow along. Cause you see that first post come in and you get invested in how they're doing. You do, and that's what the amazing part is, is that we take these little animals into our mm -hmm. hearts. And I know that when one passes away, ah. it's absolutely tragic. Let me have this, let me show. Okay, so talk about this baby now. Well, this little baby, we got a call and they needed, they wanted immediate help ASAP. And I do know the director of the Humane Society in Pulaski County. And, uh, it came in, was surrendered to the shelter. It is three and a half months old at two and a half. I mean, two months ago, this puppy was hit by a car. You can see the broken bones on and these the And the puppy never went to a vet, never oh got any care. God. And um, so they surrendered it to the shelter this morning and they knew it was in trouble. Um, it's, they're saying, they took it to their vet and they're saying organs are displaced. Um, uh, you know, the diaphragm is damaged, um, fractured leg, um, it has trouble breathing when it eats, so everything's shifted up, and as it's growing, does it have room? So I don't really know. We don't know the outcome of this, but we just know that we're going to try. And it's a little boy, so if you want to start <laughs> throwing me some names, I'm going to have to have a name soon. But don't be offended, because we've used so many names, I don't reuse names, so don't be offended if I don't, but throw me some unique names for this sweet little boy. Well, you named one after me. I did, and yeah, I felt. Baby yeah. Tara did not survive, but you gave it your best shot. We and did. she was precious. precious. She what was kind a little of dog black was baby puppy. Tara? God, I don't oh. even know. Yeah, she was tiny, she little was baby. She was the littlest thing I think I've ever seen, and she was absolutely precious, yeah. and I know that Rebecca was holding her, and that was all that really mattered. Mm -hmm. So throw some names out to Rebecca. We also want to thank uh, the folks who are watching. Cindy Tandy says, Oscar Madison and Miss Pinks, say oh. hi. Oh, love them. Her bulldogs, man. I tell you, she kills oh, me. Oh, I love them. Eric Cooper, I love I'm you. I'm auntie. Aaron Ashley Scott is watching. Kim Jarbo, Rick Zimmerman. Thank you all so much for being with us on this Take It From Tara. Live from Pet Wants on the Avenue. And I'm loving the fact that I can go remote now. I'm loving the fact that I'm, I not, think it's neat. I'm not tied down to any place. Yep. Oh, Isaiah says, poor little thing. He's talking about the puppy. Yeah, it is sad. John Imler says, Moses says hi. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it fun? All these people who are, who are connecting with us. Via Moses Facebook. is one of our dogs that's with a John Emler who is with Top Dog Training, and Moses is ready for adoption. Uh, go, to our, go to our Facebook page and look at the video. I've this seen is him. a dog yep. that just it needs probably a higher activity person, but he has trained that dog. That dog is beautiful. I mean, it's like I can't believe what he's doing now. He's just the most. So if you have a, you know, someone that runs, he's had an injury, so he's not, actually he, uh, he has three legs, um, but it, it, he can run some. I mean, he's a very high energetic dog, but you know, you've got to watch that, but oh, he's just gorgeous. So check out Moses. Absolutely. And you know, people are starting to respond to the uh, comments about the dog and Lorna Grimm says, love him, prayers. And she's putting up all the little prayer Lorna hands. Grimm. Lorna Grimm. Yes, Lorna Grimm. Hello. Joan Heck says, Cutter and Sassy say hi. Hi. Hey, Joan. I talked to her. I talked to Joan yesterday. Do you know the story of Cutter and Sassy? I do know that you had a part Sassy. to play. Well, and, Sassy yeah. was my foster Lindsay, okay. and she was so tiny, and she was Wyatt's responsibility. Brady's usually the nanny, but Wyatt really loved Sassy, and he taught her how to chew and to tug and to eat and all these. She was the tiniest dog I've ever seen. She was about the size of... Tyson's head. Oh my gosh. She was so small, and so we actually kept her. 
for three weeks, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden she goes back, and Joan and Cam went and adopted her. Cool. And Cutter came from a hairdresser, so the two of them together are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mary Kay says, name the puppy Tom or Barack, David for David Paget, Jeff for Jeff Walls. That's all I got. <laughs> Okay. Do we name dogs after Tommy Ham? We have, I think. Have you? I think we have. He may be off the list. Barack would be a good one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. David for David Paget. Jeff for Jeff. Now, well, let's name him Jeff for Jeff Walls. We call him Walls. Because the women's team is so fantastic. Okay, I know nothing about sports. Oh, I'm so sorry to just, disappoint just, everybody. Just let me tell you that United. Jeff Walls is the women's coach, right? Sure. They're killing. <laughs> they are <laughs> killing. I'm... Oh, I'm a UK fan. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's why I don't talk sports. I don't well, talk politics. I think these are all great you. ideas. <laughs> Jeff Topping is watching. Thanks for being here with us today. Uh, it's 422, and I'm moving around because I just like to move around. You guys, don't get too, don't get too antsy with me. Aaron Kraft is watching. Thank you. I love the fact that so many people tune in when they know that it's Wagon Wednesday yes. because we always have an opportunity to show off the um, – importance of our animals and there are pets but they're also our children and yes. i think that's a key that we have to really get across and obviously tyson fits the bill <laughs> very much tell us about his life how long have you had him and where did he come Happy. from well let's see he will be 10 next month wow. and i have had him since he was 10 weeks old <laughs> so i actually got him it was a friend of a friend of ours who had gotten him from a breeder apparently wanted a min pen but then found out, I guess, his apartment policy said that he had to pay extra every month to have a dog, and Unreal. they couldn't afford to do that. So they had to find a new home for him, and they were ready to take him to the pound. Oh, and so we jumped in and took him, and he's been mine ever since. Well, he's so. absolutely <laughs> adorable. And, and obviously, he's had him. a very rough life. <laughs> it t you can tell. He's yeah. wearing camo, <laughs> and he's got on a Batman collar. Yes. I do like the Batman. Batman is his nickname. Better. Oh my God. Batman. I'm absolutely <laughs> in love with this dog. He's so cute. Now, Becca, I want to know about um, the status of several of the dogs that you have at oh. your house, because I know that they're all fabulous dogs, but they're in various states of health. Now tell me a little bit about some of the ones that you had at that fundraiser that we went to recently at Captain's Quarters, the mm -hmm. dancing for the prospect stars. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the, they're not all at your house, but tell me about some of our No, they are there. not all in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Several are. Several no are, judgment. including uh, the, the Greyhound from South Korea, who is uh, that's a story making me crazy. That's but a story. I love her. All I have to do is think of where she was and what was going to happen to her, and I'm like, okay, I can get new sheets. Because she, she dug a hole in them for me. She was oh. redecorating. Oh. But, um, but uh, she's, What's her name? She just got, her name was Eve. Yeah. But um, we officially adopted her. Oh, good. And so her name is Christmas Eves. E-A-V-E-S. Oh. Hello. I <laughs> love that. And so she knows, she knows Christmas. And I adore her. I really adore her. But she is um, a handful. And it's just because, I mean, she lived literally in a cage above, above ground, never got out, never had anything in her mouth. Um, it was just an awful existence, and her fate was so horrible, you don't even want me to talk about it. Well, on, she wasn't going to be with us anymore, that's No, she sure. was going to be dinner on yeah. a plate, and that's where the brutality begins. Yes. She, her whole life has been ill. But when they take them to market, it's it's something uh, of nightmares. Yeah. So, so that's the greyhound who has come to your house, who has j <laughs> dug up your sheets. Yeah. Oh, that's just. She got a sharpie the other day. She's very. very <laughs> Does she draw on the walls? <laughs> oh, is she, she artistic. She, 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 yes, she is. I mean, I might be having her uh, do some paintings or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sell them to yes, benefit so the arrow fund. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's a mess, but oh man. They have I, elephants I, paint pictures with their trunks. And so cats. Yeah. And they're upside down. Okay, before you go on with the other animals, you do painting mm -hmm. fundraisers down here. Yeah, we do. Tell it's, us about mm -hmm. it, Lindsay. Paint your pet. Uh, we have a local group come in, and they are artists, and they will, you send your picture in of your pet, they do a little sketch on the canvas, Okay. and then they bring that canvas for you, and they kind of help you paint that portrait of your pet. Oh, I love um, that. We do a ton of them. 
Um, most of them benefit the Aero Fund. We'll have yes, one at the so end of, many. yeah, we'll have the one at the end of April that will be for the um, Great Dane Rescue. Oh, that's one. Yeah, they contacted us and asked us to host one for them. So Good. yeah, that'll be another fun one. But it's it's always a lot of fun. Um, everybody enjoys it. Everybody's always nervous when they come in that Aww. they're not going to be able to do it because they're not an artist. But honestly, they all turn out gorgeous. Everybody so. turns they out beautiful. They do turn out beautiful. Yeah. I yeah. mean, everybody does a great job. And if you get stuck on something, the people who are the artists, they'll come around and they will actually help you. And they'll sit down and get those little details just right for you. Do so. you serve snacks and beverages mm -hmm. with the paint? Yep. We'll have little snacks here and drinks and good. Yep. All right. So if you're starving to death, you'll be able to make it. What time do these events start? Um, usually they run uh, 6.30 to it's usually 9.30ish before oh, everybody's wow. finished. Um, cool. We usually do them Monday evenings because that's the day we're closed. So it's yes. the easiest. Uh, the one that we're going to have at the end of April will actually be on a Sunday okay. because they have a lot of people coming from out of town. Yes. Um, and it'll start, I think, at 4.30. <laughs> He's going to come over and visit you. <laughs> Ooh, I would love Aunt it. Rebecca? Anybody who will hold him and pet him. <laughs> so Lorna Grimm says, our baby and I sew at CAH in Crestwood is doing wonderful. That's what, t Lorna, I was just about, I, I, I tried calling, but I got that call on the intake. Uh, we have a little, I don't know if you remember, we had a little dog that we brought in named Dakota. And it. I got a picture and it was a puppy that was down. It was like um, down. Like I thought. This is the Parvo puppy. Yeah, but we didn't know. We were really, I really thought it had an um, uh, obstruction. Uh, yeah. Um, so we brought it in. It turned out it was Parvo. Yeah. And um, we fought and fought and fought it. Blue Pearl and he died. Um, and then um, a girl went up to where he came from and found the others. So six out of uh, five out of six have died. Oh God, that's hard. And uh, we have uh, little Greta still fighting. We lost Gilda and Glenda, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's just kind of heartbreaking. Uh, but she is a precious little baby doll that we are actively looking for a foster for, but. To think all of this all of this s sadness and uh, suffering, because dogs with parvo suffer greatly, even when getting care. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's amazing what that virus does. All you have Could to have do been is vaccinate. One, a vaccination would have prevented it all, and <laughs> and spay and neuter, please. But uh, a vaccination could have helped, and uh, she is. Uh, she still will be shedding the virus, so we're looking for a foster. Um, who doesn't have other who pets. Who doesn't have, well, she can be around other pets, but it will, um, it will shed on your, into your environment. Do you know what I'm saying? So very soon she'll stop shedding herself. But uh, we've got the statistics and we're very honest with what needs to be done. But Now isn't Courtney Gray fostering an animal? Uh, Courtney Gray is. Uh, yeah, that has Parvo. Bree, and she had Parvo. <laughs> She's recovered from Parvo. Is this the little it, golden? Oh, yes. God, I love her. <laughs> that dog is gorgeous. Her She's name is so Bree. She's so cute. And um, it is amazing. You know, Courtney has tarps down, and it's a job to yeah. take care she takes, of a dog. Yeah. For two more weeks, she's in quarantine, and then she can go anywhere. She posted know. the other day. Did you see that, mm -hmm. Lindsay? The, Courtney oh. posted about what is required to take care of a dog with Parvo. Yeah. Yes. It was unbelievable. The yeah. time and energy. I don't know how the girl goes to work. I know. And then she's just... Uh, the cleaning and the bleaching and the taking that. out and the feeding and the... Yes. It's a job, and that's why, and, and that's why little Greta things. doesn't have a foster yet, Crestwood Animal Hospital. I know you're taking good care of her, but, <laughs> but I mean, seriously, we have to be open and honest, yeah. and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a special kind of help, and yep. I don't know what rescues are to do. I've asked the doctors, because a lot of vet hospitals don't even have quarantine areas, really? um, and if they do, they might take one, and then where is the place that you put them? while they shed you know so it's a it's a very difficult thing that could be prevented so easily yeah it is absolutely and also i might add this person or the last few people that we've dealt with they were selling their animals either on facebook or craigslist i mean the one panda 25 dollars. <clears throat> she's the only one that survived out of 12 or 13. But I mean, in that, isn't that sad? They were selling them for $25. Now, and... And spreading Parvo. And, well, they, she didn't have Parvo, but she had um, 
uh, mange and malnutrition mm -hmm. like you wouldn't believe they were found in a basement just oh just I saw pictures she's just adorable. awful she's adorable yeah, yeah. Oh we think God. she's i can great. see why you named her panda <laughs> she looks yeah she's the markings of a panda and i think she's part <laughs> great peer, you know peer yeah She's All got right. the double deweys. Amy Picklesheimer says, so admire the great works of the Arrow Fund and look forward to checking out Pat Wants on the Avenue. <laughs> and she says, can you repeat event info? I had a blip in my sound and missed it. So sure. yes, we will do that. The end of April, do we have a date? Yeah, it's the 29th. The 29th mm -hmm. of April and yeah. it's 6.30 to 9.30? No, that one, since it's a Sunday, it'll actually start at 4.30. That one's at 4.30, mm -hmm. okay. Yep, and then it goes until you basically finish your painting. April the 29th. <laughs> Stay as long as you want. Yep. It'll, the, uh, it won't go live to register mm -hmm. until the end of this month. Okay. But the information is up on our Facebook page. Are you so coming back at the tell them, tell them to the uh, Tell them about the Easter Bunny, too. Yeah, the Easter we'll have on the 31st, so not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, 12 to 3. Come get your pet's picture taken with the Easter Bunny, and you can make donations in lieu of paying for the photos um, nice. to the, to the uh, Aero Fund. What so. would we like to have people donate? I mean, just, just in a general sense of the word, um, Lindsay, what would you like to see people donate? For I mean, a we've done this in the past where we've just put out a donation jar and people donate anywhere from 5 to $20. So. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's I just like that. We'll what put some like $20 donate? bills in the jar yeah. just to give people the idea. <laughs> right, Becca? <laughs> So when we are uh, here at Pet Wants on the Avenue, there are so many things to buy. And I'm just looking behind you, Lindsay, and I'd like you to talk just for a minute, give Becca a chance to breathe, about your product line and the things that you have that are available, all the way from neckerchiefs to dog food to toys uh, to snacks to stuffed animals. Absolutely. Yeah, the main thing, obviously, is our pet food, made fresh every month. Um, it's our own brand that we do. And then we have all kinds of all natural chews like bully sticks, um, no hide chew, so there's no raw hide in it, cow ears, pig Wait, ears. Wait, you just said something important. Why yeah. is there no raw hide in it? What's the deal with raw hide? Raw hide is bad. <laughs> really? <laughs> raw hide, the way it's made, first of all, um, chemicals, 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 lots and lots of chemicals. Um, the other thing is it's not fully digestible, so it can actually glob up in your pet's really? stomach or their intestines and create blockages. Rawhide makes raw Dr. Eves. <laughs> Rawhide raw makes um, uh, veterinarian uh, surgeons very, uh, hap you know, not happy because they're never happy when they have to cut into an animal. But right, it, job security. Yes. It's it's it, it's it can be very bad. And well, I mean, I'm I'm guilty. When he was young, I didn't know any better, and he got rawhide. But never ever again. <laughs> well, and I I haven't given the dogs rawhide since they mm -hmm. were young either, because somebody told me one time that it was bad for them, and I took their word for it, and uh, never have given them anything since. I yep. give them a greenie every once in a while mm -hmm. to clean their teeth. Yep. And we sell whimsies here for that. It's yeah. The same concept basically. Yeah. So. And then their little their little clear snacks, you mm -hmm. know, some Rudy Green's doggy cuisine. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you know, the not so high end but much better than most high end dog foods. <laughs> right. You know, the natural balance, which I've been told is is, is mm -hmm. in that top category, yeah. which is yep. okay. Um, so anyway, we're talking about all the things that we love here at <laughs> Becca's like, oh my God, I've got to talk about the Aerofund, Tara. Stay I on task. I am not doing it. She <laughs> Stay puts, on task, she, Tara. She just <laughs> absolutely puts words in my mouth. I know. I am not. Well, we, I have, don't we have great bandanas here that part of the proceeds go to them. Yes, that's so, very good. And they're and awesome. I don't have to put words in your mouth. You've got so many already. Easter bandanas, <laughs> derby bandanas. Yeah, Easter bandanas. Tell me about derby. these. The giant, derby bandanas. Tell are me about adorable. these giant stuffed animals that I see. There's a great big dachshund. Oh well, a that's just bulldog. a display. Oh, so you can't buy them. <laughs> the, well, the dachshund was actually what I used to display the collars on until oh, I got the ladder cute. to put them on. Oh, I love so that idea. So he's just kind of a little display animal. Um, You'd we've tell got us little, where to order one, though, wouldn't you? I got it on Etsy. <gasps> yeah. Wow. I've got a wow. life-size black lab that's gorgeous. <laughs> Like the ones that breathe or the ones that are No, just a flush. stuffed one, but it looks real. It's awesome. It really? well, and you've got our little uh, guy sitting over here who is from Cuddle Clones. They're Aww. a local company. Oh, I don't know if you've heard of them. Cuddle Clones is awesome. Yeah, they actually will make an exact re replica of your pet. Oh, it's amazing. Really? It's stuffed animal form. Oh, so yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. sample one right there that they do. Wow. Where do you get the animals that you give to the pups as they come in to the hospital, Rebecca? Don't you give them all cuddling? cuddling little creatures. Well, there was a donor that was giving us uh, little um, puppies that um, uh, that have a beating heart. Oh. And so we try and, we try and get those yeah. until we run out. Hopefully um, more will be donated. But um, it's, it's, it's amazing how they 
they, they, they love that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and where would you get something with a, a beating heart? Well, I, I don't know where she, she would order them in bulk and, and oh. give them to us. I bet Lindsay could find we them. We probably have about uh, six left, so I'm kind of starting I've to... I've never heard of that. But I mean, it's I've amazing for, for our, an animal yeah. that's injured or a small animal, a pup. And one thing that just jumped into my head, we were asked about a Sheltie mix um, this week, and a larger dog. Right now we have zero medium to large fosters, so I had to turn this animal down. Do you know what that does to us? Yes, it, I do. It hurts. Yes, I do. So now we do have a foster for this puppy. Okay. So, but I mean, to turn down an animal that's hurting at a facility that has open wounds and stuff because I don't have a place for it, it's yeah. quite sad. Yes. So, that we don't have a place, not yes. me. But uh, we, we do have to be responsible and right. only take what we can afford and what we can house. And they have to go somewhere when they leave the bed. Well, so. and before we end this hour, we're in, probably in the next 10 minutes or so, we're gonna talk about what we would like to have happen for the Aero Fund as opposed to being a fully foster-based organization. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cover a few more things before we do that. Sure. Welcome, Kenny Dorhofer. glad you're with us. Pam Rogers. Hello. Holy smoke. Tell us who Pam Rogers is, Rebecca. Well, I spoke to her last night, last evening. <laughs> I speak to her most, almost every day. She's the former um, state director of the Humane Society of the United States. Yes. And now Catherine Callahan is. Yeah, and Pam Rogers is our COO of the Errol Fund. And absolutely, uh, she's the one that keeps everything legal. Everything that, you know, I mean, we are... Legal and ethical. Legal, ethical, and uh, okay with the state. I mean, we just, I just can breathe easier knowing she's on everything. She basically keeps you in line is what you're telling me. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Lisa Taylor says, hello, my friends. Hello, Lisa. Nell hello, Tingle Lisa. is watching. Mm -hmm. Now, I got to tell you, Nell Tingle, who lives in the hood, who is one of my dear friends, has been a huge adopter of animals. And a couple of years ago, I went into, um, well, actually, I found two dogs running loose on Frankfurt Avenue, took them to their home, found out who their home was, where their home was, and they had an, a senior dog. Family was getting divorced. Dad wanted to take the senior dog and euthanize him. Mm -hmm. Mom did not, and she couldn't keep him, so Nell took him and is still giving him the end-of-life care that was supposed to come within a couple of weeks and has been several years because wow. she has taken such good That's care. That's wonderful. Yes, so Nell, thank you so much. Lotta Olson is also watching on uh, Take It From Tara. We are live on location at Pet Wants on the Avenue with Lindsay Howard on your right. She's holding Tyson. <laughs> Rebecca Eves from the Arrow Fund wearing the bright blue. That's a great color with your eyes, by the way. Oh, my eyes that barely open anymore. <laughs> Well, so sorry. You spend all yeah, your we time. We were just talking about that. You spend all your time taking care of uh, the most horribly tortured, abused, and neglected animals imaginable, mm -hmm. and those involve a lot of late nights. I know. Yes, it does. It does. And that's pretty awesome of you. And I know that's one of the reasons that Lindsay and Pet Wants uh, do so much to help raise money for the Arrow Fund. Absolutely. Um, what we're going to kind of touch on here briefly Baby. is how you can help the Arrow Fund, and there are many, many different ways. And we're going to save the big one for mm -hmm. last because okay. that's called the big, um, the big. What do you call that? Stretch thing? goal. It's like <laughs> to get the goal. We're running. We're running the race. We're in the long run, but we have to really get it. So, what are some of the simple ways that just the ordinary person, you or I, could help the Arrow Fund? Well, on our our website, and we periodically uh, post having assigning the Aero Fund as your charity of choice with your Kroger card mm. about quarterly we get we get a, a large check it's it's very fruitful it does not take away from your coupons that you get it does not take away from your um, points your points on your gas right so it's it's like please that is just a wonderful way and now they've even made it easier if you scroll down we posted on it this week on the Facebook page, there's even a number you can call and do it. It's like, the, you know, so it's it's very easy to do, but it is something that really makes a difference. Um, you can also go to smile.amazon.com and register the Aero Fund and a, a small percentage of your um, Amazon uh, purchases comes That's to nice. the Aero Fund. Mm -hmm. Um, those are really simple things to do. Those are really simple things. My Kroger card goes to them. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Good. Thank you, thank yes, you. me too. Well, it makes it it makes a huge difference. I mean, I, I was shocked at the 
of the, the, the check that comes to us. So it does, it takes nothing from you and it gives us everything. So, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to do. So um, you can purchase a tree in memory of your pet from um, uh, Louisville Tree in a, can, for a, a campaign we have called Ralphie's Promise. I love that. Yes, and it can be planted in your home or at Creasy Mayhan. Mm -hmm. Of course, I, I don't know if everyone really understands the our cases aren't normal, just like the puppy that's on its way in here now. It's not normal, and a lot of times it's not something just a, a normal vet clinic can handle. Right. So we have very high-skilled veterinary care uh, in, in, initially, and uh, it's very, very expensive. I mean, very expensive. And, and we've sent mm -hmm. to um, University of Ohio, University of Tennessee. We've even sent to UC Davis. But I mean, just like Blue Pearl or you know the the twenty four hour hospitals, Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do excellent work. But I mean, then we have the secondary vets, not secondary because they're not secondary in our eyes. We love you, but I mean, where we do the shots and follow up and all that, it all adds up. And our uh, bills for veterinary, that's where most of our money goes, is is just staggering. Staggering. Yeah. Just. Staggering, yep. you know. I mean, no, nobody would believe it. So, the pressure is always on uh, to so cash or uh, donations, and also we have a brokerage account. You can give one share of your stock, or two, or five, or How ten clever. million. How clever! Ten That's million. A, so don't whack Lindsay in the face. <laughs> ten million. She, she would be so happy our, if we got ten million. She's our host today. Don't damage her, please. I, I don't. I would never damage. Those her. are great uh, ways to help. Yeah, the stock amazed. is really, really exciting. And then you can put us in your long-term plans um, as far as uh, in a, in your estate. Yeah. Um, those are things that are just really to keep us going. You've because, really thought these things through. Oh, it's you, well, know? you have to yep. because we are one of the places, the Aero Fund, we are the one of the first ones that are tagged when an animal is really yep. hurt. Absolutely. Okay? And it's killing us not to be able to, to take what we're, uh, as many as we're tagged, but we are, we feel honored every time we can say yes, but um, it's a, it's, we just know coming in, it's a lot. It's well, a lot. Let me just tell you that, um, you know, the people who are watching and who are talking to you, like Lorna Grimm, love you, Rebecca, and all your help, as well as everyone else who supports these precious animals. Wow, I spend so much money at Kroger, and we'll do it now. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And my boss, Ramona Johnson, at Bridgehaven Mental Health Services is watching. Yay. Good thing Bridgehaven was closed today. That's right. So I could come and do this. That's right. I'm just kidding. She knows that I do this. <laughs> Mary Kay Corfidge says, come eat at Noodles and Company this Sunday. 25% of your meal goes to the Aero Fund when you mention them. That's right. So that's, that's right. important. On Hearthstone Line, yes. It's not automatic. You have to mention. Well, we'll be there. So you'll be walking we'll around. be there at the table saying, <laughs> would you mention us? <laughs> Won't you mention They them? are wonderful. And um, for those that are vegetarian or vegan, uh, you know, they have options for everyone. That's Which cool. is lovely these which days. Which you are. I'm vegan. Yes. yes, which is good. Rita Hyde is watching. One of my very favorite actresses in the whole world. I've known her for many years. Lorna Grimm says, so true. You are all wonderful. Thank you, mm -hmm. Lorna. Our heads are getting ready to explode. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about um, pet wants again, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about this food yeah. because you say it's prepared for you and then it's, it's brought in and then you deliver it free of charge to anyone who's purchasing it. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the food itself. So the food is made in Ohio. We partnered with a family owned facility up there. They've never had a recall out of their plant. So wow. we're very proud of that. There you go. Um, but the food, they actually do something different for us than what most pet food companies do, which is make it fresh for us every month. So we order every month what we think we're gonna need to get us through the next 30 to 45 days. And they make that up and they send it to us and it's done fresh. They slow cook it for us. So wow. we're not cooking the nutrients out. And then they don't put any of the, the bad stuff, the dyes, the fillers, the byproducts or anything. It's all else. clean food is what yeah. you're saying. Well, it's what's really stuff. scary is every time you turn around, there's a recall. And, 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 uh, Becca, know. I hate to interrupt you, but Betsy Hay. Oh, that's the person that's you getting, to, you she's our to, transporter for our new puppy do, coming Do you in. want to answer that? Go ahead. Just hang on a second. Hey, Betsy, maybe. you're on camera. We're on. To take <laughs> don't it from say time. anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what she has to say. Do you have him? 
They have them. He's Excellent. the sweetest, cutest little thing ever. Of course. Okay. Well, um, what's your ETA? Because I'll meet you at Blue Pearl. This is awesome. This is a transfer coming in live, even as we are speaking. 550? Okay. I'll, I'll meet you there. You'll be. And I appreciate it. Is uh, Seven with you? you? see these pictures of this puppy. Absolutely Perfect. amazed. Perfect. She Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to get off because we're actually on camera right now. But... <laughs> Uh, we're, we're so excited Nothing and like bless life. you for transporting Betsy and Seven Transport, mother and daughter team transport for us that. anytime that That's they awesome. can. So. I love that. Thank you so much. I'll see you in a little while. Thanks, Betsy and Seven. Bye-bye. <laughs> So Give that's, the pictures. Show the pictures again okay. of this baby that we have not yet named. So you still have the opportunity yes, have to come up with the name of this beautiful puppy that just now we found out is being transported. We'll be arriving at Blue Pearl at 550 with numerous broken bones and a lot of other very serious very injuries serious as injuries. a result of, of uh, damage by a human and a lack of care. And this is a beautiful little boy. And tell me what his, uh, what his prognosis is at this very moment. Actually, you don't even know. I don't even know. I know that um, he was. His x-rays are horrible. Yeah, they are. He was um, hit by, he's two, three and a half months old, hit by a car two months ago. Has not received any vet care or any pain management. Oh my God, but he was just leg. taken to Pulaski Humane, who did take him to the vet, and they realized how serious he was. And so they uh, uh, basically um, they basically said, uh, "Can you please help us stomp?" Because the or there are they are saying his organs are displaced, um, and he is having trouble breathing. If he eats, his legs fractured. All too much for this animal, oh, uh, a yeah. baby, to be a, to have been hurt for this long. He's phenomenal. I tell you what, I can't I can't even imagine. Latifa Mina is watching, and she said, "Sending love and good energy." Oh, thank you, Latifa. She's our favorite pet Appreciate psychic and animal that. communicator, and we love that. Lisa Taylor says we'll be out in front of Lindsay's store at the Easter parade with awesome new shirts, which we love. Yay. And Vicky Petsy is watching. I affectionately call Vicki the tick lady because she's in charge of the Kentucky Lyme Disease Association. Oh, okay. She's the one who brought 7,000 views to the show and I'm sure that it's up by now, but I've never ever seen anything like the wow, interest wonderful. in ticks. And she well, told me this morning on my walk on Frankfurt Avenue that there are ticks under the snow. Believe it. Carla Wallace is back there going, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> but it's true. It's really true. Well, and so many people and animals and everything, I mean, they, they suffer from tick-borne diseases. Um, and it's, it's, it's... Lyme disease is unbelievable. It's very hard. Yeah. It's and and hard. Vicky said to me, um, Tara, the thing about Lyme is that it can cause so many other issues. So that's another good reason to use some means to prevent your animals from getting ticks. And I know you offer natural products, mm -hmm. Lindsay. Yep, we actually make our own uh, mosquito flea and tick spray right here in the store. Cool. Um, I use it on Tyson every one to two weeks, and then I use it on myself too for mosquitoes. <laughs> so well, mosquitoes really chew me good. up, but it's all natural. doesn't hurt them if they lick it off, won't cause any issues. That's fantastic. Yeah. And you don't necessarily have to use the medication that's sold over the counter or right. sold by vets, but you know, if people choose to do it, it's, yeah. it's the common way, but you have an alternative. Yes here at Pet Wants on the Avenue. Kim Kelly, Reggie Garcia, uh, glad that you are with us today. Just a real quick uh, thing here, Rebecca, would you pop your phone back on for me so I can look at it? Um, Carla Wallace is here and she is, I call her the activist of all activists because all of her life she has been involved in so many different things that have been uh, regarding social justice that have been an important part of our consciousness here in Louisville and, and a part of our conscience as well. So, Carla, you can come on up and stand with me and watch these two for the last few minutes because they are hilarious. This is hey, Rebecca Carla, how are you? Yeah. Carla Wallace, and of course, you know Lindsay from Pet Wants. You and I have walked down here many times yeah. on our pet, our, yes. our little pet uh, walks, Santa which is fun. The <laughs> Santa yeah. Stroll is Santa right. Stroll. So um, we are at Pet Wants on the Avenue, and I'm so glad to be here. Lindsay Howard has saved the day <laughs> because we had another location up the street at Barkstown Road at Frankfurt Avenue, but unfortunately Kim went out of power with the snow. So As we apparently were, a lot of people do. Which... A lot of people. My friend Chad Bruce and I, who went sledding earlier today, his parents were out of power. And um, the, the hood is an amazing place. We usually do very well 
But today, that heavy snow really rocked some people's well, hopefully everybody's powers back on by now. Yeah. And Rebecca Eaves from the Aero Fund is also with us. We've been talking for the last hour or so about uh, the wonders of the Aero Fund. And Carla just missed the coolest phone call ever. We had mm -hmm. a transport that just notified Becca that they've got the dog and they are bringing him to Brew Pearl and she's oh. going to be meeting them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very excited about that. Carla and I are going to be talking um, in about 10 minutes about everything that's possibly happening that could have to do with injustice, racism, hatred. Um, we're gonna talk about the March for Our Lives this weekend and what we can do to uh, assist in getting this done and just becoming active. I mean, I think if we were not activists, we would not have the Aero Fund. Correct. And if we were not activists, we wouldn't be able to do what we need to do to protect our children and One our One of schools. our key words is compassion because yep. compassion could save us all. I mean, in every in everything, I'm sure you're sure. going to talk about. Absolutely, it's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, let's get to the last big thing, Rebecca. And this is something that you know you always tell me that you are hesitant to talk about because you know that it's something that's way beyond the capability of most people. And by the way, welcome to Kim Kelly and my friend Mari Eiserman, who's watching from Oregon, one of my dear friends and classmates. It, the Aero Fund currently operates as a foster-based organization yes. only. Yes, and we want, we want to continue primarily to be a foster-based, but right. we have at capacity, we hit the largest number we've had. Now, this isn't just an animal that goes to the vet and then it's up for adoption. Some of them, you know, they have such long uh, 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 Recu recuperation uh, mentally, physically, uh, so we have them sometimes for a long time. So we are at our peak that we've more than we've ever had and without a facility It's so hard. I mean we we literally and then say someone my You know, I'm going on vacation in two weeks or and we're that short on fosters yes. um, Or we have a case that's in the middle of the night and you know, we'll get it to Blue Pearl But we have to have a place for these animals to go now, and not that, not, not that we, 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 still, we still wouldn't take over what we could provide for right. monetarily because right. we want to do it right. right. But there are so many times when spring break hits, so yeah. I can't watch the foster then. And, and that's nobody's fault. We appreciate all of our fosters. We have wonderful fosters yes. and volunteers. But the pressure is just so heavy, and we have gone from a very small organization to a very large operation with the same amount of people. Yes. We want a facility that we can engage the public in, where yep. we can have kids come out and learn what compassion is and, and adults and just teach all kinds of skills and, yes. um, and just have that kind of wonderful um, bonding um, experience to let people know and engage with us what we do, why it's so important to help these animals because these people that hurt these animals hurt these children. Yes. You know, it's it, we really want to like be a lot of education and about and have Spain a vet on site. Oh man, and yeah, have we've got we've site. got the dream. We just <laughs> we just need the help of the people, or, and we need a place desperately. And you've looked at it's, a few. It's um, my dream. Yeah, you've looked at a few properties that have been out, you know, in yeah. places that w maybe there was a, f a former uh, kennel. Yes. And places like that, and I know that you guys, you've told me before that you have the ability. Um, that somebody is doing some matching grants. Yeah, to a we have one degree. person that is matching two hundred and fifty thousand. Wow. And um, the th the thing is, is that the you know there's other places that have deeper pockets than us. Yes. That's why we're asking for help. Yeah. A a, a, a place that's in um, a fairly good um, location yeah. is very. And I, I, all, all Tell us your vision. All location. Tell us your vision. Oh, I want to, it's like a compound. There would be a vet there that could maybe take care of their vet clinic, or, but they would see our dogs. There's a place where we could do some on-hand training there. There's a place where we could have children come out and read to the dogs. I mean, I have got, I mean, we'll have goat llama yoga. We'll do, you know, I mean. I'm doing baby animal I know, yoga. I know. No, I mean, everybody's doing that now, but we will come up with some new stuff. I just, I lay in bed at night and think of what we can do to make it fun and to learn to be more compassionate. Yes. And to our animals, it's important for our children to uh, get that skill. Yep. And, and, you know, it's, it's just a dream. Yeah, it is. It's a fantastic dream, I must say as well. Um, Lindsay, you've done a fan. Oh, by the way, Lorna Grimm says, I can foster the foster's babies. 
foster the foster's I'm baby. not sure what that means. What does that mean, Lorna Green? Lorna, can, can you, you explain that a little bit more? Can and you foster the little uh, Greta that's there? Oh, Cedric Yelder is watching, and he and I worked on the Hillary campaign together. Mm -hmm. I love him. He's fabulous, and I'm so glad that he is watching us today, along with all of our other friends. We've got some great viewership, and uh, I'm so excited about it because the Aero Fund always attracts people's attention. Pet Once on the Avenue attracts people's attention. And today at 5 o'clock, I think that's like five minutes away, 4.50, four minutes away, mm -hmm. then we're going to do the big switch out. Yes. Rebecca's going to run Helter Skelter out to Blue Pearl to greet the new puppy who's yet to be named. Yes, I need, an, I need a male name. Do you have name. any suggestions? Male name. Carla? One that we haven't used. <laughs> Try, let's throw a couple out there, Carla. See if you can think of a couple of male names. Do you have any ideas? Oh, my goodness. They may be used mm -hmm. already, but Rebecca will know because she filed oh, yeah. them away in her Rolodex yeah. head. Yeah. Have you had a Jeffrey? Yes. I mean, you that's have. the sad thing we've had almost. <laughs> <laughs> what about Humphrey? <gasps> no, we haven't had a Humphrey. I like have we had a Humphrey? <laughs> Wait a minute. Bogart? I think we have had a Humphrey. <laughs> what about a Bogart? Yeah, we've I like had that. A Bogart. <laughs> we've had a Humphrey and a Bogart. <laughs> oh my goodness, you have had a lot of we've animals. We've had a lot I, of animals. Have you had a Hawking? No, but I did love Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm a genius. Yeah. You are. Unlike Stephen Hawking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am unlike Stephen Hawking. Oh, uh, Lorna Grimm says when someone goes on vacation. She can foster the foster's babies. That's what she's oh, saying. Oh, how wonderful. That's thank nice, you, Lorna. Lorna. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. So, guys, um, thank you so much for this wonderful hour. I really thank appreciate it. Oh, the puppy's name is Maestro, Latifa Mina says. Oh, that's good. Too. I personally have had a Maestro. Oops. But you haven't had, a, have haven't had an Aerofund Maestro. But uh, I'm thinking if Latifa thinks that oh, that's his uh, name. Latifa, that's it. It's Maestro, Yay! and uh, my, my Maestro was one of the most uh, oh. special animals ever. I love so that. So thank you, Latifa. Good job, Latifa. In, honor, sure of, really. in honor of my little Maestro, I'm sure oh, that's yeah. coming through. Yes, yeah. he's probably. My, maestro in, was a magnificent Italian greyhound that was Aww. like too big so they were going to euthanize oh. in the show ring. Oh, you know, so it's like, please, oh my yeah. gosh, she was a, just a snuggly thing well i'm so snuggly. glad yahoo says latifa mark sawyer daly one of louisville's finest actors is watching us too you know when latifa says the puppy's name is maestro you just got to believe her because she has told me well when so she many said that amazing things that kind of floored me because i'm like i've been She's, i've been going through knows. pictures and i looked at maestro wow. this week yeah she right. knows that's yeah she knows it's cool all right, thank you, Rebecca. Thank Lindsay, you. thank you. Yes, uh, thank Tyson you. has fallen asleep. Yeah, I'm missing him. <laughs> no, he just opened his eyes because he wants to say hi to Carla. Carla Wallace is going to join us in the uh, big switch out here. Rebecca's got to go, and Lindsay's got to do something like you have work. to make some money, maybe do some work. I don't know. Carla and I are going to take the next uh, hour of conversation, so stick with us on Take It From Tara. Thanks for joining us for this wonderful Wagon Wednesday. You can go ahead and just Okay, but thanks, everyone, for supporting the Aerofund. We truly appreciate it all. And thanks for patronizing Pet Wants on the Avenue. And thanks for it. Well. Oh, yeah, love it. We do. We love it. Love Thank it. you so much. I'm going to buy my treats now. All right, I'm going to keep talking. Carla, would you please have a seat, my dear? And I'm going to, to hook you up to this microphone. Yeah, I to talk some Yeah. Yes. Well, she's a, she's a huge dog lover herself. Yeah. And she always walks in the little Christmas parade and the Easter parade and all the other dog parades that we have. We are often walking together. Yeah. And, um, we come down here and we, we support Lindsay and we support Kim and that's the really cool part. Okay, so I'm just going to stay on this side because it seems like it's the easiest thing to do. Oh, I don't think so. I think you should be on the I really, I really <laughs> would like to sit next to Carla, but I feel like it's easier to talk to her okay. from across the street. Oh, <laughs> Unless I start interviewing you. <laughs> oh, you might. Andy Picklesheimer just wants Lindsay to know. Oh, I remember Andy. He's just dozing. <laughs> ah, that's I'm hilarious. Tyson. You remember Amy? I do. How yeah, do you know yeah. Amy? Oh my gosh. Everybody knows from, Amy. From way back. What it's a been silly question. Many years. 
years. Yes. But, hi, I've, Amy. <laughs> I've known her for a long time, too. She's like, hi, Carla. She's giving us a hand clap, which is really Yay. cool. And um, I love the fact that you've been able to come in because, did you actually walk down here? I ended up get digging my car out finally oh because I have to gosh. go somewhere else afterwards. Well, so thank it heavens was a good that incentive. you did that. Yeah. Do you know earlier today I did a little walk on Frankfurt Avenue? I did a yeah. fun little walk down yeah. our down our wonderful neighborhood streets. Yes, uh -huh. And I had so much fun. It and is, Mary Lynn Hartman is. walked with me on oh, video. Oh, that's yay. Chris's mom. And I love her. I love her too. She's I don't know great. what to do Chris with Mary Lynn Hartman. She's so cute. She is. And so is Chris. Yes, she is. They're fabulous. They are. They are awesome. Yeah. Hi yeah. here. Amy Pickleheimer says, "Okay, Carla Wallace. Yes. Yes. First of all, I need you to just tell a little background about your life because you come from a long line of activists. Yeah, yeah. I come from like." I think it's now, we're working on the third, fourth generation of activists. Um, my, on my mother's side, actually, my grandmother hid people under the floorboards in her apartment when the Nazis were occupying Holland oh in World gosh. War II. You know, people were um, afraid, they were trying to push back against what the Nazis were doing, and they were being pursued by the Nazis. <laughs> And I remember, um, as a little girl, asking my grandmother, you know, weren't you afraid? And she just said, you know, child, that's what you do. Oh my and gosh. so I think I grew up with a very strong feeling that if people are being persecuted, if people are being mistreated and oppressed, if animals are being mistreated and oppressed, for that yes, matter, yes. Um, from both sides of my family, you know, it's really important for us to speak up and do something. And my uh, mother is Dutch and she um, awakened my father who is from Kentucky and my father ended up getting involved in the civil rights movement here you know the uh, the call for um, for black people to be able to buy a house where they wanted to instead yeah. of you know trying to do that and being denied or being run out of the neighborhood um, by hate groups etc well you know your dad was an amazing man and i always look forward to reading his career journal editorials letters <laughs> yes he they were legendary <laughs> he, used, he used to tell me carla the shortest letters are the ones that are read his father was the editor of the Louisville Times back when we had two newspapers. Yes. It's hard to think that we ever had two newspapers. I know. Because now we're struggling just to have one paper. Um, but his father, Tom Wallace, was the editor of the Louisville Times. And my father was a reporter for years. That was his career before he kind of became a farmer out, out on the land in Prospect. And we need to talk about the land and prospect. I'm going to get all this good stuff up first, and then we're going to talk about what you really came here to talk about. Tell us a little bit about that beautiful land that I had the privilege of, of finding just by mistake and meeting your dad up there. Yeah, it's a wonderful farm that grew from about 100 acres when my father was very young and went into ownership of the land with a dairy farmer. There comes Tyson. With a, uh, with a dairy farmer, my father, and he owned it together. Um, and then, well, actually, my grandfather and he owned, owned it together. My father inherited it and then started buying pieces of land that were adjacent. And now it's um, over 600 acres. Oh and my gosh. the good thing is, is that land is disappearing, open land is disappearing very quickly because yes. of development. Yes. And that land, we, um, in 2001, we put it under what's called a conservation easement, yes. which means till the end of time it will remain, you know, the beautiful spaces that it is now. Um, there are about 20 houses on the farm that people can rent, um, including on the river. And there's also a horse riding uh, operation. We have a couple of barns, and people come out and go horse riding there. Now, who is running the farm right now? Um, the farm is run by uh, Jerry Tucker, who's the farm manager. Okay. And another wonderful woman named Mary Lowry, who is a realtor and a um, and runs a number of farms. Awesome. So, yeah. So good great. experience. They yes. know what they're doing. They're taking care of. Things. Definitely. Mary's a horsewoman, and she knows the horse business. So Tell us about great. Henry's Ark. Yeah, Henry's Ark is a place that started with animals that were. Um, 
that people were getting rid of, like from roadside v zoos, which oh are gosh. typically not very good places for animals, but they are places of interest where people play pay to see what they consider strange animals. And my father started rescuing critters from those places, and it kind of grew to, um, you know, there's a couple of camels out there, there's a lot of goats, there's llamas. Um, <laughs> Rebecca's just like, oh my God, this is awesome. and rabbits, and yeah, a wow. lot of different wow. creatures. But it's open to the public um, five days a week, except on not on Monday or not on Sunday and Monday. And people come out and, you know, kids can get up close to the animals, uh, which is easier to do than at the uh, the zoo. Yes. Um, and it's a beautiful land. There's a lot of deer, a lot of wildlife, because there's so much development in the area that the critters kind of take, take haven there. Well, you know, I don't know if you saw my Facebook page, but I chased a coyote down the street oh on my. Galt Avenue at 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my goodness. I, I thought it that. was a freaking loose dog. So, of course, I would... You were rescuing it. <laughs> I was chasing the loose dog, and I got down, and utility workers were down on the You're Peterson Duminal place, oh and they goodness. were like... What are you doing? And I said, catch it, catch it. Wow. And they said, what are you going to do with it when you catch it, ma'am? Yeah, and I said, yeah. well, I'm going to take it back to his family. What a stupid question. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, ma'am, that's a coyote. Seriously. Yes. Wow. We have a lot of coyotes on the farm, but I did not know that they had made their way into Clifton and Crescent Hill. I'm actually a fan of the coyotes. That Mostly they eat very small rodents, <laughs> but there's a lot of stereotypes yeah. about them. I think they get a bad rap. Um, but um, they've never bothered anything on our farm, and we used to have little sheep, and my father was always rescuing dogs, so we had a tremendous number of dogs out there as I was growing up. Well, and he had buffalo, and that's the first thing yes. that I saw. That was how yes. I met your dad when he showed me the buffalo. I was oh, so excited. Great. That was such a great trip. No, and he was probably really happy to, to meet you, too, because he really appreciated folks who loved animals, and he did. I mean, we grew up... Rescuing animals from the time I can remember, there would be something would be falling down in a fence fence post hole, you know, a rabbit or a turtle, um, that kind of thing. And so he always um, encouraged us to rescue. We would always be stopping on the road to help a, a tortoise of get course, across the of turtles. Of course, it's like we wanted one of those signs that says "This car stops for turtles," but I haven't seen it yet. When I traveled across the country with my parents in our motor home yeah. that my dad drove, we stopped and got box turtles, and we would either move them to the side of yes. the road, yes. or we would pick yeah. them up, bring them home, and yes. then they would stay with us and in release Oregon. them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so great. Mary That's Kay Corfidge says, very good point about peaceful coexistence with coyotes. Oh, good. Amy Picklesheimer says, it's so beautiful out there, meaning your farm. Yes. Wonderful, okay. peaceful place to be. And uh, I appreciate you guys commenting. You're welcome to interact with us. If you have any questions, you are, uh, oh, we have a coyote in Forest Hills, J-Town. See them from oh time to time. They're everywhere. They are. Bill Hollander's telling me that there is a family of coyotes that lives at the bottom of Peterson. And oh, Greenstead. I'm not surprised in that little woods there. Yep, yes, yep. and they've yes. been sighted in a lot of places, so yeah. that's something that we have to be aware of. Exactly, and, and you know, really when you think about it, people have destroyed the habitats of yes. the wild creatures, so yes. they are not invading us, we have invaded yes. them. That's absolutely true. Carla Wallace is with us. Um, she's involved in just about everything that you ever see on the news that regards um, making it safe and equal for people to live in this world. And she's made a, a huge impact in Louisville. I know you love people talking about you. You love getting, <laughs> you hate getting praise. I've well. seen it on your face so many times. You're like, just let me be in the background. But you know what? You're not. No. You are a good voice. And well, we thank you for that. You know, I, I, I couldn't be here if it weren't for other people who have encouraged me and other people who join in the efforts to make our city, our community, our country, and this world, you know, a better place the best it can be and to me that that includes you know your earlier speakers uh, spoke about the word compassion yes and I think a lot of times you know we we separate ourselves from things that are bad because we don't want to you know be disturbed by them but to me injustice disturbs us whether we're engaging with it or not and that we're all going to be a better community if we are doing something about it and 
Um, some folks may have seen one of the things that's coming up this weekend is um, the March for Our Lives. Yes, I wanted to talk to you about that yeah. because I saw something in the CJ yesterday. It was the front page right next to the Facebook scandal mm -hmm. that said we may have to, the marchers may have to pay for their own security. Yeah, I, um, that concerns me because I feel like free speech and the right to free assembly is part of the Constitution. And when we start charging people um, thousands of dollars to express their free speech or to assemble, um, it's like saying if you have money, you can have free speech, but if you don't have money, you can't have free speech. Um, so I think that's disturbing. There are some cities where um, they automatically cover it because they do want to encourage yes. free speech Especially and assembly. With kids. Especially with the young people. Holy it's incredibly smoke. hopeful that young people are leading the charge in the work against violence and guns in our society. And I think that we should be supporting them to do so. Absolutely. Um, they have been able to raise the money and the march will go on and we expect several thousand people to be there. It's gonna be fantastic. And it starts at Witherspoon Garage, I guess, at yes, 1.30? down on the river, down on the uh, waterfront. Marching mm -hmm. to City Hall? Yes, marching so to So this will yes. actually be a march and not just a rally. Exactly, the gathering is from 12.30 oh, okay. to 1.30. 1.30, and then um, they're kicking off the march, I believe, at 1.30, and then should be uh, down at Metro Hall probably around 2, 2.30, and they're going till about 4.30 with Perfect. speakers and that kind of music, I'm sure. Perfect. I love know. that. By the way, turn around and wave bye to Rebecca Eves. Bye. Bye, Rebecca. Bye. Thanks for your good work. Bye. Tell Maestro we sent our love. Yes. <laughs> We're so lucky that she's going and getting that puppy, and that's yeah. the most exciting. Do you know there, and you said compassion is it, truly. Yeah. You've been involved in um, social justice since you were a young person. What's your background? Where did you go to school, and you know, what, kind of a, what kind of a learning experience did you have that yeah. gave you this, this love? You know, I think that, um, I mean, having family members who were engaged in civil rights and anti-war and anti-Nazi work definitely created a, an atmosphere that encouraged um, connection with other people who were hurting or were struggling or were fearful. Um, and I grew up in a family in which um, I feel like we had a lot, and yet I was very aware that there were so many people who had too little. Yes. And to me, in the wealthiest country in the world, that level of inequality is unjust. And disproportionately, it falls on people of color, um, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars that women, for example, lose because of the inequity in the pay between men and women. And that's true between then white women and women of color who make much less. Yeah. And to me, all those issues um, impact what kind of society we live in. And I can remember being little and not understanding why my country was all around, all across the world killing men, women, and children who I had never met and who had never done anything to me, and that was during the Vietnam War. Yeah. And so I marched as a little kid, you know, against the Vietnam War in downtown Louisville, and people threw eggs at us and all that kind of thing. But I didn't want our soldiers dying, and I didn't want Vietnamese people dying. And I don't believe as a country we can war our way into peace or into justice. And that just was all around me as I was growing up from my family and just from looking at our society and, and how I thought it could be better. Where did you go to school? I went to school um, both in this country and in the Netherlands. Um, my mother's Dutch, That's as right. I said, and in Amsterdam. And so I bet that I did not finish a full school year in one country until I was probably in the uh, in the ninth grade, and that wow. was difficult because uh, it was fine in my history classes and my English classes, but math. If you don't follow math through, you can get very lost, and I got very lost. Aww. So that was and continues to be a weakness is math. Um, but I do believe you know that it was good for me to see um, a different society. You know, in in Amsterdam, I was living in a big city, and here I was living on a farm. So yes. they were two very different places. Yes. Um, you know, my my father is from Kentucky, 
And so I knew the Kentucky side really through him and then the Dutch side through my mother. My mother still lives in the Netherlands. She's in her late 80s and she's still going strong. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and I have um, five, well, I had five siblings. Um, I lost my brother two years ago. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, he actually, you know, one of my big concerns is, um, is the opioid crisis, and I lost him to uh, an overdose. Oh, and to me, it's like, you know, we have refused as a society to treat this issue as a health crisis. We try to teach, we try to treat it as an issue of criminal justice and that we can just lock people up. Right. But if we are not dealing with this as a health crisis, we are gonna lose more and more people. And that's outrageous to me. In the Netherlands, my other country, <laughs> um, it is treated as a health crisis and drug use is much lower, drug overdoses is much lower, and violence is much lower. And so there are things that other countries are doing that we need to be learning from, and one of those is treating drugs as a health crisis. And I'm sure that there's a, a, a much better view of guns and use of guns, if there is any use of guns. Oh, I don't goodness. even know in the Netherlands. Tara, thank you. Uh, no, you can't, you can't carry guns in the Netherlands. <laughs> um, and so there is uh, very little gun violence in wow. the Netherlands. And so when people say, well, it's not about the guns, it's about the people, well, I'm sure the people in the Netherlands are not that much better than we are, but they don't have guns. <laughs> and so that's a good thing. And, you know, to me, the idea that people should be allowed to, to run around with machine guns, and that is part of freedom, what about the freedom of the people who get killed? Yeah. You know, that is an ending of people's lives. And I'm incredibly excited that the young people, I mean, it's coming out of tragedy, and that's the horrible thing is that these tragedies have to happen before we wake up. But young people are really stepping forth and, and putting out the call um, for stronger gun laws. And it is an uphill batter, be, battle because there are organizations that um, are totally pro-gun in a way that, that, that any limitations are seen as... Um, as putting a, a, a clamp on freedom. And to me, we do have to think about the freedom of people to live. Well, right and we have live. to compare that, Carla, to the reason why organizations don't want the <laughs> bestiality bill mm -hmm. to be written in Kentucky for mm -hmm. strange reasons, and yeah. why we can't get animal protection laws that are solid against dog fighting, yep. because yep. there are various and sundry organizations that are, are stopping that. Yeah. Exactly. People somehow think that our individual right to do whatever we want should trump the cruelty, the horror, and the death that sometimes individual actions, you know, uh, perpetrate. Catherine Ziegler is watching us. We thank you so much, Catherine, for being a part of our afternoon on Take It From Tara. I'm speaking with Carla Wallace. Hi, Catherine. Catherine <laughs> is awesome. Do you know her? Have you met Catherine? I think we do know each other. Cat Ziegler, <laughs> and they're moving to Florida. Oh, my goodness. I know. Wow. I want to go. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> Seriously. Can we come visit? Yes, we can come visit. Okay, Don't good. worry. They're going to have 15 or 20 rooms. Okay. Lots excellent. of guest rooms. Um, it is a beautiful day. She's sending kisses, by the way. It okay. is a beautiful day in our neighborhood here in Crescent Hill. We are in on location at Pet Wants on the Avenue. Thanks so much to Lindsay Howard for helping us. Catherine yeah. says, come on along. Ex oh, excellent. We will. We'll, excellent. We'll we have in. snow here. We'll get Lisa and all the dogs, and we will be on, on our way down to Florida with you. Um, oh, my goodness. So Pet Once on the Avenue was kind to, uh, to let us come in at the last minute, Carla, because yeah. our friends up at Barkstown um, lost power. Yeah. Which really stunk. So we're going to pick up with them probably next week or the week after. Oh, good. So Lindsay was going to be on the list for next week, and she switched excellent. with us. Excellent. Well, grateful. I love that both Barkstown... And, um, and this place, um, you know, they get involved in community events they that sure are do. about taking care of dogs and other animals, yes. too. And I think that's so important, you know, for businesses to be engaged in bettering the com community and compassion, et cetera. It's well, really and, and two, it's very important. What Rebecca Eves was saying from the Aero Fund is when people abuse animals, then the next step is children, and then the yeah. next step is adults. Yeah. And we've seen it time and time again with yeah. serial killers and yeah. people who have written books about their experiences. Absolutely. It's, it all comes back down to it. So yeah. one of the things that, and we've talked, we're talking about a lot of different things, so forgive me for jumping around a little bit yeah. here, but 
Carl has been in this town. By the way, Nick Curcio is watching, and Tom Ham from the Arrow Fund is watching too. Mm -hmm. um, Carl has been involved in um, much social justice from, as we just said, a young age, and going to school back and forth in the Netherlands uh, gave you quite a view mm -hmm. of the world as mm -hmm. you were going through. Did you decide that you wanted to continue on to uh, a college education and beyond? And it, was it something that enabled you to go even further into the activism that you were experiencing with your family? Yeah, I think that, you know, um, education, higher education, it allows you to study, for me especially, the struggles of people that have gone before us. Um, I think that's so important for us to know that change is possible because when we look at the abolitionist movement against slavery or we look at the civil rights movement, the women's movement, more recently the LGBTQ movement, um, people up against tremendous odds with great courage were able to make changes. It doesn't mean everything's fixed, you know. I feel like um, social justice is a lifelong journey. But I do get a lot of inspiration from people who went before us who were also battling an uphill fight. Yes. And I think that's so important. And education was part of that. It um, introduced me to that history. It introduced me to people who were change makers, uh, professors who believed in change making. And I got, in ver I got very involved in activism on my campus um, in an effort um, to, uh, at that time, South Africa was ruled by a small white minority over the black majority, horrendous cruelty. The United States supported that horrible government. And so we told our university, you are not gonna make money on this. You have to take out all your investments. And we ended up winning that on my campus. And then I came back to Louisville and we had the fight here at University of Louisville and we won it here too. That's outstanding. Because we didn't think people should make money on oppression, you know? Yeah, so. and that's typically across the board. We want to also acknowledge the folks who are watching us today because they have a great interest yeah. in what you're talking about. Michael Johnson, Brad Leedy, he works with me at Bridgehaven Mental oh, Health Services. Great. Lenny Mello, who's a great golf instructor, oh. and I will give you information on how to reach him. And Courtney Gray, of course, one of our great animal rescuers, is also watching. Good. You can find uh, the opportunity here to ask questions if you'd like, or just discuss with us as Carla Wallace is speaking, what's on your mind, and whether it has to do with uh, social justice or the march this weekend, or whether you've had issues um, as an LGBTQ uh, person who who might be encountering some sort of discrimination, you've got an opportunity here to really get some information from someone who knows what she's talking about and who can actually connect you with people who can help you do something about it. Yeah, I think um, it's critical for people not to be alone if they're facing discrimination, bigotry, oppression, um, that when we work together, not only do we lift each other's uh, spirits, but we can be more effective, we can be stronger, and. Um, just, you know, mentioning Bridgehaven, I really want to appreciate uh, people who do work around mental health and disability issues. I feel like it's almost another coming out of the closet, so to speak, Absolutely. around mental health. Yep. And um, tomorrow, Surge, the group I work with, Showing Up for Racial Justice, is actually doing a whole session on what does disability justice have to do with the rest of us and how mental health and physical disability has to be part of the fabric of uh, social justice that we're weaving in this community. So I have a lot of appreciation for folks doing that work. Amazing, thank you. And where is this going to be taking place? This is going to be happening at uh, Mariposa Center, which is a center for people with disabilities, and it's at 1520 Baxter Avenue. And it starts, it's actually at one from 1 to 2.30, which isn't the best hours for, for folks who um, have regular working hours. But it was the best hours for the folks with disabilities who are going to be leading the session and are right. going to be part of it, and we wanted to make that accessible to Wonderful. people. Wonderful. Well, we'll have to post that on this page after we're yeah. finished, too, Great. talking. So yeah, thank you for that. It's on our Facebook. So. Excellent. No, so Surge, showing yes, up Louisville for Surge. Justice. Louisville Surge. Louisville yes. Surge, S-U-R-J, and you'll be able yeah. to find all the information. Um, yeah. By the way, Mary Kay Corfidge says thanks for all you do, and oh. we appreciate you very much, Mary Kay, for being thank a part her. of yeah, for being a part of our uh, show, Take It From Tara. We are Take It From Tara, and we are live at uh, this wonderful place. Lindsay's gone back to work, Carla. Can you uh -huh. believe it? I can hear her up there. Lindsay <laughs> Howard and Tyson, her little minpin, have gone back up to, to uh, do some work at Pet Wants on the Avenue. 
Uh, Rebecca Eves just left from the Aero Fund to get a new transport coming in mm -hmm. who will now be known as Maestro, thanks oh, to Latifa yay. Mina. She came up with his name. And she just said the puppy's name is Maestro. She yeah. didn't say, I think you should name him Maestro. No, and then it turns out she had a dog that Isn't she that loved crazy? very much who was named Maestro. Isn't yeah. that amazing? I tell you. Do, 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 no, I know, right? <laughs> uh, I, I did not grow up religious, but I, I, I grew up spiritual, and uh -huh. I think there's something to it. I think there's know. a lot to it. Um, yeah. So anyway, Rebecca left, but Carla stepped in, and she is uh, discussing so many different things. And, and we're just going all over the books here because she's involved in so many different aspects of justice. And you talked a little bit uh, when we were just discussing what we were going to discuss today. Mm -hmm. You talked a little bit about hatred. Yeah. And hatred's across the board one of the things that we have to deal with. And it's being, um, well, it's being validated, let's mm -hmm. say, and being justified in so many different walks of life and yeah. parts of our society. Mm -hmm. What can we do? Yeah to make an impact as small as we could possibly be or as large as we could be. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's we are living in some very challenging times um, when, you know, people in power are, you know, rather than countering hatred are actually uh, uh, promoting it, uh, accommodating it, whether it's the way that people in power talk about women and not caring about equality for women or talk about black people um, as if they're all criminals, all those kind of catchwords that yes. are used, you know, um, a accusing people who um, need support, who can't find jobs, you know, of, of being on the dole or, you know, those kinds of things. Um, the it, old expression on welfare. Yes, right. It's, <laughs> what it's is welfare? Like, exactly. Something that you're on. <laughs> right, exactly. And so all of that is used to stir up hatred against especially people of color, LGBT folks, people with disabilities, um, so that we're divided and so that we don't look to come together and say we have to confront the challenges um, by being united. Um, Kentucky, some people don't know, Louisville actually, Jefferson County, has the second highest number of children who are impacted by having a parent in jail, um, an wow. incarcerated parent. Wow, and I it, didn't know that. Yeah, and it has been identified by the National Centers for um, Disease and Health as being a huge impact on children in their ability to thrive and on their health, their mental health, their physical health. And so that is an expression of hatred institutionalized. Yes. The fact that we have that many children impacted, it means that we have children going to school who may not be learning well because, well, mama's in jail, you know, or daddy's in jail. And right now under our so-called justice system, disproportionately people of color communities are targeted. And for me, that's a form of racism. Exactly. You know, it's like crimes are committed in all parts of the community, but, but where we end up targeting people is disproportionately brown and black families. Um, I'm part of a group that's supporting immigrant families. And right now, especially in South Louisville, where a lot of folks are struggling and live in trailers, pa trailer parks, immigration services shows up and grabs the parents. The kids end up in protective services. Mm -hmm and uh, may never see their parents again. And to me, that's outrageous. You know, we're a country made up of immigrants and we are tearing immigrant families apart. So those are expressions of hatred that are not just on an individual level, they're on an institutional and societal level and they're harder to get a hold of. But groups like Surge and, um, and other groups, the Fairness Campaign, the ACLU, Black Lives Matter, those are all places to be able to get involved and make a difference. You know what I'm going to do? You're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm going to turn this camera around just because so I, I can. So I can interview you? I want you to interview me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want you to interview me, but I do want to be able to sit next to you and talk to you okay. a little bit. I just feel like we're too far away. Okay. So we're not going to look at that side. We're going to turn it like this. Uh -huh. Do you know, know. Omar Relos? Relos? Let me see. J-O-M-A-R-E-L-O-S. No, no, -E but thank you. We're glad that you're Jomar. watching us, Jomar. That's or Omar. I don't know how yeah. he says his name, but I'm going to come over in front yeah. of you. Uh-oh, wait. Under there the we thing. go. Here we okay. go. And we can do this because 
Because we can. There you are. I love that. <laughs> Here I am. I just felt like I needed to, to be face to face and with I you. And I should look at you then. You right? should look right, at me. Right, right. And, well, you can look up there. Or look up there. Okay. Yeah, you can watch. Cool. But you I know, can see you. I can look at you. Up you can there. look at me and you can talk to me. Whatever, okay. whatever makes Great. you happy because you're okay. the guest. Okay. And Excellent. I always like to put my guests' needs first. Excellent. Actually, Excellent. we're at Pet Wants on the Avenue, which is where we put pets' needs first. Yeah. Pet Wants on the Avenue is owned by Lindsay Howard, who's upstairs doing some work after being with us on uh, the wonderful Wagon Wednesday with Rebecca. Eves from the Arrow Fund, and uh, she and Tyson, who is a cute little men pin, have gone up there to go to work, and we've been talking about um, compassion with animals, and now we're talking about compassion with all different si uh, types of society. We're, we're going from bad to worse, it seems, mm -hmm. Carla, at this point. Yeah, I think we are too, and I mean, you know, it's interesting because sometimes people think, you know, that this situation just suddenly happened. But we forget that, you know, and this is unfortunate but true, our country was created by stealing the land from Native American people. Then we enslaved black people to build the wealth of this nation, and we stole Mexico from the brown people. And then we put the um, uh, Asian people in internment camps or working for very low wages on the railroad. And so this history of racism, sadly, has been built into the fabric of this country, and we're still dealing with it today. And I think the fact that our country has refused to take it head on has resulted in this culmination where some in power have been able to use that racism to scare groups from, about each other, blame each other, and then we end up in the situation that we have right now. I don't think I've ever heard it explained that way. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that beautifully um, describes why we have so many different mm -hmm. parts of society which are marginalized. Yeah. I, no, Ta Tara, I think you're absolutely right. And we don't think of it that way. Um, you know, right now there's a, um, they just did a study in Louisville of redlining. And people are like, well, what's redlining? Mm -hmm. Well, that was when the banks refused to give loans to black families trying to buy homes in certain areas. They in fact took a pen and drew around certain neighborhoods and they were either going to have to pay more for the loans or they were not going to get the loans. Wow. So then we wonder why black families are struggling economically. Well, if you look at that redlining situation and you add to that a couple of hundred years of not getting paid for your labor, which was slavery, and of course there's economic struggle yes. in black communities because people didn't have the opportunities that people just because they were white had. Now, white people aren't all the same either. There's certain sectors of the white population that got more opportunity than other, other white folks. So, you know, there's also big class differences among white people and that gets used to divide people. You know, the um, race gets used to divide people that could be standing together for the things that we all need. I think of it when I think about environmental pollution. You yes. know, we're in the valley here. Yes. And there's the bowl. Uh, yes, so in the bowl, right? <laughs> and all the germs kind of land in the bowl. And um, we have one of the worst air qualities in yes. the whole country. And it disproportionately impacts uh, people of color and poor white folks who live in southwest Jefferson County because a lot of the industries right. are concentrated there. But because of this Ohio River Bowl, it means we have a tremendous amount of asthma and other respiratory problems that affect the population as a whole. Yes. So to me, it's like, well, what if folks from the East End and the South End and the West End were actually joining together saying, you know what, this is impacting our children, it's impacting our ability to breathe, and we're going to stand together and we are going to demand better pollution standards. We would win that if everyone was standing together. But people in the East End are told, oh, that's not your fight, that's happening over in West Louisville, and West Louisville folks have reasons to believe that the folks in the East End will not stand with them, or the folks with the, in the South End won't stand with them. So the work of Surge really um, showing up for racial justice, we actually go um, door to door in white communities and talk with people about why it makes sense to join together across racial lines, across yes. lines of sexuality, et cetera, you know, to form a stronger voice. Um, and that's what I hope we'll see on Saturday. You know, I hope we'll see a strong, united voice because 
It's the only way we can make change in this country. And on Saturday, what Carl is referring to is the March for Our Lives, which was instigated mm -hmm. as a result of the Parkland shootings and mm -hmm. the kids at Parkland mm -hmm. who have made a tremendous impact on the collective consciousness of our country yes, absolutely. by saying we are not going to let this go away. Yep. And they deliberately planned the march for the 24th of March so mm -hmm. it would not just become a flash in the pan, yeah. now you see us, now you don't, the week no. after everybody goes on to the next thing. That's right. We've already had one school shooting in which the actual shooter ended up dead, mm -hmm. um, killed by a resource yep. officer who was armed. Mm -hmm. um, two other people uh, were wounded, one being apparently the ex-girlfriend of the shooter mm -hmm. and someone who she was with at the time. And it's, it's heartbreaking to know that uh, it has taken children <laughs> yeah, to make literally. the stand when adults have had the opportunity to do it so many times and have just not yeah. been able to do it. Absolutely. Last week, um, Louisville Showing Up for Racial Justice was doing some support for students at Mazee uh, Middle School yes. who were, um, were walking out. Uh, they walked out for um, 17 minutes, the same, a minute for each person who had died Parkland. in Florida, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was incredibly powerful because these students had faced some pressure from school administrators that they weren't going to be allowed to walk out, but they persevered and said, our voices are important, we need to make a stand. And I think those of us who are adults can learn a lot from these young people who and are leading these And they went back efforts. to school, didn't yes, they? It yeah, wasn't they like it was out. a great excuse exactly. to get out of school. No, in fact, I was there. We were, weren't allowed on the premises, but we were around the perimeter just cheering them on. And these young people just came out in the hundreds out into the yard and then they made some speeches about their concerns about gun violence. And then after 17 minutes, they traipsed back into, the, into school and, and continued their learning. But for many of them, I bet that, that those moments, those minutes of being outside were more instructive than a lot of the rest of the year will be for them. I think you're absolutely right. We've got some great people who are tuning in. Let's just, I'm gonna stand up so I can see this. Um, we talked about, oh, Vicki Pusateri is watching. She's one of my friends who's the wife of a fabulous builder named Joe Pusateri who built um, two of the extreme homes mm -hmm. that were given to folks, one of them Patrick yeah. Henry Hughes. Yes, yes. Um, so they do a lot of good for the community as yeah, well. Awesome. And we appreciate you guys watching us. Carla Wallace is talking with us about all kinds of topics today. We've been uh, discussing racial justice. The showing up for racial justice, which is um, Louisville's surge, is something that Carla has started and has been a huge part of. And we're talking about the march that is going to take place on Saturday, March for Our Lives, uh, which will begin at 1.30 at the Witherspoon, down by the river and move to City Hall. And um, we're talking about racism and hatred and the things that divide us. And let's talk about the things that unite us. Yeah. You know, I think that more and more we need to um, have a values-based approach to our work. Um, values like, for instance, caring about community. Um, values like compassion and sharing and um, um, you know, just caring for each other as human beings and as earth and as creatures. You know, there shouldn't be a limit on what we can care about. And yes. I think that when we approach uh, it that way, you know, people have similar um, hopes and similar fears, you know. Uh, people want to be safe and healthy and be able to provide for their loved ones. Those kinds of things, I think when we talk about those things and then relate them to the issues of our times, that can be a uniter for yep. people because we share, I think there's a lot of shared values whether we realize it or not. And sometimes if we only talk about the issues, people can get divided, but if we talk about the values, that can be uniting, you know. we we. Um, in the, uh, we talk about liberty and justice for all, but when we break that down, if somebody cannot put a roof over their, their head, if somebody does not have enough to eat, if somebody uh, has lost a child to police violence or has had their mother deported, you know, by immigration services, that's not, um, you know, um, liberty and justice for all. No, it um, is not. You know, and, and I think when we talk about violence, violence is also being hungry and being homeless and, and having war in your country. 
um, all of those things, environmental degradation, you know, I mean, we are talking about the potential that the earth as we know it and the ability to live on it, if we continue the way that we are, it will no longer be. And it's incredibly short-sighted for us to not be doing the things that we need to be doing in terms of corporate pollution and standards um, for the environment. Um, you know, I may not be here when the earth, you know, is, in, is uninhabitable, but I do care about what, what comes after us and I care about you know, the young people, like the ones that will be there on Saturday, who will be here after us, um, the Earth's creatures, you know, I don't think we have the right to destroy the Earth um, at will and not be addressing it, but we're living in times where, you know, from the highest, you know, powers in the land, there's denial about the fact that we are destroying the Earth. Um, I think transparency is something that's so important, yeah. too, in all of the different topics that we've been discussing. Um, Carla, because you know you spoke earlier about mental health, and, and you know that I work part time at Bridgehaven Mental Health mm -hmm. Services, and a lot of my coworkers are watching today because Yay. we had the day off. But um, you know, I'm I've always been open about the fact that I suffered a life threatening mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. and have come a long way mm. towards recovery, and I'm working in recovery yeah. every single yeah. day at Bridgehaven, That's which great. is awesome. And then we've got people who have drug addictions, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, not all of them survive yeah. those addictions. Unfortunately, yeah. like your brother, yeah. um, and the transparency of knowing that we can tell people Absolutely. anymore that we're gay, yeah. or that we have an addiction and we're working on it, or that we have a mental illness, is like uh, Joey Pantoliano made yeah. a movie called No Kidding Me Too. Yeah, and the idea is Carla. I've got a broken toe. And you go, yeah. no kidding, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I say, well, I've got a mental illness. Yeah, no yeah. kidding, me too. Yeah, Whatever exactly. it is, I'm yes. addicted to opioids. No kidding, right, right, me right. too. Absolutely. That's how I think that we can share yeah. the kind of information that we need to share yeah. openly and transparently to get the word out. Instead yeah. of making it all a secret, it's all hush hush. Yes. Activism has to stay under right. you know, the cover. And you've never done no, that. You've no. been you've been out there from the beginning. Yeah, no, and, and Tara, I think you're absolutely right. I think that one of the our biggest challenges is people feel isolated. You know, with whatever we're struggling with, we end up feeling isolated. And you know, history, or history as I often say, <laughs> common purpose, which is, you know, the welfare of all of us, um, changes are possible, you know? I mean, huge changes have happened in this country. That doesn't mean, you know, there's justice for all by any means, but we can't discount the battles that have gone before that have been able to make change. And that has, has overwhelmingly been people coming together to yes. make those changes. Um, you know, I was part of the uh, the Women's March early this year that happened uh, a year from the Women's March uh, last year. And it was incredibly important to see women there, yes, for women's equality, but also uh, standing with people with disabilities and LGBTQ people and people of color standing against racism, standing for economic justice. Yes. I think the more that we look at these things as intersectional, the more powerful we will be to be there for each other so that it's not this competition of whose issue gets more attention, but it's how we see that they're woven together and that the solutions are woven together. I wanna to know what your experience was at the first Women's March. So I was at the Women's March here. Yeah, I, I was too. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your experience. Yeah, it was, um, you know, we had just come through a very uh, challenging um, election and I think there was a lot of fear, yes. understandably, and shock um, about what had happened. And so that the Women's March happened when it ha happened, I think, was almost like a, um, it was something all of us absolutely needed. We needed to literally be in space with one another. I know I felt that. It's like, how can we come together, literally stand together? I'm try I can't even remember if it was cold that day. It was we cold, because you know what, my, <laughs> my 96 year old mother was with oh, us. Oh, I love that. And she was bundled up. Wow. And she loved it too. Tara, I mean, here I'm she so had glad been. That yeah. She was there. Me too. I'm so glad she was there. Me too. And that was one of the powerful things about it is 
People who had never marched before were there. People had their children or their parents yes. there. Yes. Um, we were talking, I mean, the, 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 um, the speakers were a diversity in terms of, of, um, of ethnicities and races and ages. and ages, et cetera, and that was incredibly powerful. And again, we were talking about women's rights connected to racial justice issues, connected to anti-war and economic justice and LGBT rights, et cetera. We were connecting all of those issues. And I remember as one of the speakers looking out on this amazing tapestry of people yes. that filled the square and it was like, yes, we may be afraid and we may be angry, but together we're hopeful. And that is incredibly, I grew up going to demonstrations. I very much believe that we have to put our bodies in the streets yes. to make change. And so for me, it's always an incredibly empowering thing to be with people. And, you know, I sometimes I can't even hear what I'm saying because I know it's informed just by the feeling of being with everyone and that everyone, and you know, for some people, it was scary to come to a demonstration Absolutely. because it's not in their comfort zone. Right. And, and you know, when you talk about, you know, the issues of guns and stuff, public spaces, and can we come out? I believe we get safer the more we show up together and the more that we have each other's backs yes. and stand together and say, we are not going to allow anyone to be expendable. Because sometimes we are living in a society that says the sick, the old, the mentally ill, the poor, uh, you know, the, the black, the brown, the, the LGBTQ are expendable, that we're not as human. And to me, it's often those groups that are raising the clarion call for the change that will end up benefiting everybody. Well, and I remember as a young woman, my dad saying to me, you can do anything a man can do mm. and you can do it better. Mm. And my grandmother was an attorney. My great grandmother mm -hmm. was a suffragette. Mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> One of them back there was a covered wagon baby. Okay. So they came across the plains and, and I came from a family of very strong mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. and very informed men. Mm -hmm. yeah. which I think is part of the reason that you know that I've always been involved in, and I've documented a lot of the yeah. things that you've been speaking mm, at because I mm -hmm. love doing my Facebook lives yeah, at the events. That's great. And I'm going to be down there. That. Oh, I, this is the most important thing: yeah. is spreading the word to people, just like we're watching yeah. right now. Yeah. People who are seeing us, and uh, Jack Entman is with us, Jennifer Hatton. Tim Cole, Steve Willis, thank you guys Hello for there. watching us. <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful friends, and you know I think I got to check the time. Close, but we've done a fantastic job and what I want to do is thank you for the tremendous work that you do to keep people to keep people you know aware mm -hmm. and to make people participate in in what's going on in their nation and not allowing things to just mm -hmm. Happen. Yeah. We can, you know, the word for me is galvanizing. Yes, that's a great and word. And the kids at Parkland have galvanized yes. the nation. Yes. And they will continue to do so. And I, I loved hearing them say, we will not be silent. That's right. That's and we right. will not be pushed out of the news cycle. That's right. These are such educated children. Yeah. They're so informed. Everybody talks about the millennials and social right, media right. and all this other stuff. Man, they are putting it to work absolutely, for them. Absolutely, absolutely. And they know their truth. They know their truth. They know what's happened. And what's so exciting is they're finding power in coming together with each other. And yes. I think for those of us who are adults, being there for them and supporting their leadership and supporting their call for an end to gun violence is, um, is really important. Um, and it's you know, we sometimes we say our youth are the leaders of tomorrow. Well, they are the leaders of today. They have to know. be the leaders of they today. They are showing us the way, and that's been true throughout <clears throat> history. I mean, the young people, the young, the black youth, who helped desegregate the lunch counters. Some of yes. them were 14 and 15 years old, and they were facing being beaten down by white patrons and by police just for sitting at the counter and ordering a sandwich. Those were young people. They were leading then. Young people can be leading today. And I think that's, you know, it's really, really important. 
I want to thank Carl Wallace for being with us. We also want to thank Lindsay Howard for letting us come to Pet Once on thank the you, Avenue. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Tyson. Thanks, Tyson. <laughs> there they are. We appreciate here. Let me just go ahead and put the camera up there so they can see you. There you are. Wait a minute. There you are. <laughs> Lindsay and Tyson, thank you so much for being with us today and allowing us to be here at Pet Once on the Avenue. There are all kinds of fun activities that are going on, and you too can be a part of them. Hello, Sarah Byerly. Sorry that you're here at the end, but you can always go back and watch. You can Hi, rerun Sarah. it. And uh, we hope that you all enjoy your wonderful day in the snow. Yes. Oh, the sun has come out. It's so pretty. I don't want it to melt. No, I know. I tramped Honestly. around in it today, too. <laughs> and it too. just it, it's There's a certain joy. You know, I don't I want sledding. anyone to fall. I went sledding. I know. I heard you say I had that. fun. I got totally jealous. The puppy packs played sledding. in the snow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh my they gosh. had so much fun. So we are going to encourage you to become a part of the solution and not part of the problem. All right. And one of the first things you can do is the surge event yes, tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow we have a surge event called What does Disability Justice Have to Do with All the Rest of It? And that is at 1 o'clock at Mariposa Center at 1520 Baxter Avenue. You can find more information on our Facebook page, which is Louisville Showing Up for Racial Justice, Louisville Surge. We Thanks didn't so even, much. We didn't even get to Medicare or no, Medicaid. No, we didn't. What we can, again, okay. and we shall. <laughs> okay. Great. And I want to thank you all for watching Take It From Tara today, live on location from the beautiful Pet Wants. And I will be back on Monday from 4 to 6 with a couple of special guests, one of whom is Lee Balcom. He's a, an artist. He's an author. He's a speaker. He has a wonderful podcast. Ooh. And he actually has been my podcast mentor who helped me to get Puppy Pack Adventures online. Oh, great. So we owe him a great debt of gratitude. Excellent. Thank okay. you guys so much for tuning in. I Bye -bye. will see you soon. Have a good one for Carla Wallace, Rebecca Eves, and Lindsay Howard. Let's take <laughs> Bye -bye. it from Tara.